Hey there, independent Scientologists. Discover a new perspective to your bridge by visiting ao-gp.org. Get in session with remote auditing using the Theta Meter. Are you curious about where you stand? Head on over to ao-gp.org now and take our free personality test. Join the growing group of independent Scientologists today. Hi, and welcome to another Scientology Outside of the Church podcast. I'm here with uh, Quentin Stroud. I'm Jonathan Burke, and we have Scientology Girl uh, with us, Lisa. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> and this Hello. Is, uh, this is episode 13, season 7, and this episode is titled, Are Scientologists Really Heartless? So this 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 will... Uh, be a uh this is gonna be this is gonna be hot i think yeah i think this is i think i think this really speaks to a lot of the uh, a lot of the the controversy and a lot of the way people i think sometimes view scientologists out here in the world and so i think this is really gonna shine a lot of light on why scientologists act the way they do yeah. boy oh boy this is gonna be good Absolutely. So, Quentin, um, why don't you take the the uh, the the lead on this from the outset, and then uh, we'll we'll jump in accordingly. Yeah, totally. Well, so you know, this came to mind for me because, obviously, being twenty two years in the game and knowing what I know from various places around the world, and uh, you know, I'm in uh, Southeast Asia now. Um, it it is a it's really interesting to see how Scientology handles things, right? And I want to focus on the handling of issues, handling of problems, handling of upsets, handling of of feelings, right? Because whatever this thing is, from if you're in California to New York to France to uh, uh, Germany and all the way across, around the world, uh, Taiwan even, like Scientologists handle things differently than most people on the planet Earth. <laughs> we are peculiar people. Well, and and, I, I think that, that that maybe the the overlying arc of the whole thing is 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 if you reward a bad child, what do you get? A badder child. Yeah. You 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 reward a down statistic, you get a down statistic. You reward an up statistic, you get an up statistic. Now that's the administrative side of it. But the thing is, is that what you validate is what you get. And this and we we're basing this 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 podcast off of a lecture from 1951 called Randomity and Emotion. And this was in 12 October 1951. This is very early in in Scientology, independent Scientology. So it's it's a it's an important concept. A lot of the really good stuff came out of the early 1950 lectures. So I just wanted to interject that in and and, and go along with what you were saying. Absolutely. I mean, be, because when we talk about how we handle things in the world and how. Um, we, no matter where we are, no matter what cultural background or what ethnic background, that there's this way that we are uh, able to handle certain problems, issues, emotions, feelings, and stuff like that. Those things really do impact how we are perceived in the world. And as independent Scientologists, of course, you know, we have uh, maybe a little bit more of a heartfelt approach right to certain things a little bit more uh empathetic approach to certain things but just as, as those who study scientology those who have been scientologists for years those who have uh, uh uh done their trs and objectives and and communication drills and things like that there's a certain way we handle things and i'm using that word handle for a reason because it's going to come up later um per lrh there's a certain way we handle things that is integral to know so you can know what's what when it comes to our Scientologists really heartless. So do I can tell you some stories 
but most of my stories have been centered around people who are really have been very, very kind, very, very gentle in handling me and talking to me, uh, me being uh, a, a black person from Alabama and coming into Scientology, which in, even in the South was predominantly white. Like it, I was I was handled very gingerly and very tenderly. You know, I was, you know, it, it felt very different um, than other groups might have spoken to me, right? And so those were a lot of my experiences. Um, and later on, you know, kind of kind of feeling how I needed to communicate or how I was able to communicate my truth and would communicate certain things. It was very, very easy for me. I'm just talking about particular experience, but it was very, very easy for me to communicate with Scientologists um, versus in some of my other circles um, where I didn't feel as heard or I didn't feel as acknowledged or whatever in different areas. So that's those have been my stories. What about you guys? Do you guys have any heartless stories or heartless experiences with certain Scientologists? So, okay. First, um, I, I want to start by saying that, you know, let's sort of differentiate the two. So when it comes to emotion and stuff, um, a lot of the time emotion is reactivity. So it's from the reactive mind. Now, I'm not saying that all of it is. I'm not saying that, you know, mm -hmm. we are meant to be heartless or we are meant to be, you know, robotic or anything like that. But when it comes to, uh, you know, dealing with situations, a lot of people, especially if uh, almost exceptionally, if they are non-Scientologists, they will deal with it in a way that is just uh, impulsive. So, for example, if somebody makes somebody else angry, it will be emotion that will lead the way instead of analytical reasoning. Um, and the reason why that's important to know about and understand is because if you're dealing with the reactive mind, it's not necessarily sane. We can feel at that point in time as right as we possibly could feel. Like, you know, have you, have you ever seen two people argue? They are adamant that they are right, but one of them has mm -hmm. to be wrong, or at least one of them has to meet each other halfway, but neither are willing. So it's kind of like the reactive mind takes over and then there's, you know, all these emotions and stuff, whether it's grief or anger or resentment, any of that stuff. Um, but the true thing that differentiates the reactive mind from obviously um, uh, people who have either overcome or understand or know about it is that we as Scientologists use more so analytical reasoning. And I think that is why people think that we might be a little bit heartless um, is because instead of using that reactivity uh, and, and all of that stuff, we use tools to kind of understand mm -hmm. and solve problems. That's the thing. Um, you know, Anybody who isn't a Scientologist would go and, you know, if, if you have a friend um, and you want to solve a problem with them, they would be like, you know, uh, sympathetic or, you know, they would use the tone scale without knowing about necessarily the tone scale. And in that way, try and be there for them and be supportive and stuff without necessarily solving a problem. Whereas I think Scientologists are very much centered around solving problems. Um, you know, when it, when mm -hmm. it comes to, um, what's that thing? Uh, you know, obviously there's auditing and then there's, um, assists and and all of these things so we mm -hmm. centered around yep. trying to help people whereas your friend or family member are only interested in getting you by and making you feel better right now whereas we i feel right. are, 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 are more centered around <laughs> getting the problem solved long term so that it doesn't repeat um 
And we obviously have ways to do that when it comes to ethics, for example, you know, we have conditions. So if somebody's in a lower condition, we'll be like, okay, this is what you do. And there's steps to follow, which we call formulas, etc. So, you know, uh, along those lines, I think when you take a scientific approach, which Scientology is based off of, um, it becomes less about emotion, less about feelings and all of that stuff, and more about solving the problem. But that said, that doesn't mean that we don't feel empathy. Um, in right. fact, I, I think because we understand the mind so much and because we understand, uh, you know, where all these things are coming from, we actually want to help, at least the social personalities anyway, and we want to use these tools. <laughs> That's oh my God, you can know Sorry. so much right now. <laughs> yes. Well, well, well no. there, there's a difference between empathy and sympathy. I, want, right. I think, Come I, think on. That, I think that needs to be stated, and that's the thing that we tend to shy away from is is sympathy if, if, from an independent Scientologist standpoint. Sympathy is is not a good thing to do to somebody because you're you're feeding into the thing. Yeah, it's kind of just like, oh shame, I'm so sorry that happened, and that's where it ends. Whereas empathy is kind of like, oh shame, I'm so sorry that happened. Here's what might work. You, or, or 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 what what do you want to do about it? Like yes. how 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 do you want how do you want to move through that experience? How do you want to get out of this? You know, I I say to people all the time. Listen, you might like you might not like my medicine, but you can't deny it makes you better. And, yes. <laughs> and I got people all over the planet Earth that that come to me for support and for help, and it's because the medicine works, right? The medicine makes you better, yeah. and. I had one client that said was mad at me. We were, we were two way common. We were going through some stuff that he was going through, and he was like, "Q, you're really not making me feel better." And I yeah. said, "Well, that's not my job." Yeah, exactly. I said, I said, "I said my job is not to make you feel better. My my, my job is to help you be better." So yeah. what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over it again. <laughs> we're gonna go through this again, and we're gonna get you better, right? We're gonna get you through this, okay? And he felt he he, who, he had to breathe through it. And he said, "Okay, mm -hmm. I'm ready." And we kept we kept going, and we kept going. Now this person just bought a new house when before he was living in this dilapidated uh, mm -hmm. one bedroom apartment. He just bought a new house, just got a new car, is dating when before he couldn't even approach relationships uh, because of some stuff that happened with his parents and, you know, infidelity in his family, all this other stuff. It's so big. But what he had been getting, what he had been getting was this. Oh, you're you're just you you're just a victim. You're just yeah. damaged. Oh, yeah. you've been through so much, haven't you? You yeah. know, and this 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 whole this idea of complacency in his stuff. And when he started working with me, he was like, Well, Q, you're not making me feel better. And I'm like, that's not my job. I'm not yeah. trying to make you feel better. I'm trying to make you be better. Absolutely. And we're gonna get you to that point. And this is how we're gonna do it. And we kept going through the thing. So, so uh, I want to start off a little bit even deeper than emotion. I'm sorry, than uh, sympathy versus empathy, right? Because before we can even apply either one of those, sympathy or empathy, let's talk about emotion itself. Okay. And you started off very right, Scientology girl, Scientology girl, when you said emotion is generally, generally reactive, which in Scientology we call misemotion. Yeah. Right. We call it missy motion in Scientology. So can we can we get the definition for missy motion? I want to uh, make sure we got that. Uh, uh, totally. It's in the other room. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I, no I, can, I can actually I can pull it up uh, on our AI. I'm, I'm doing it right now. OK, but 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 yeah, the, reason, it's in the, the, technical, the reason why in the dictionary, technical dictionary. Yep. The the reason why I say this is because most people think that every feeling is emotion. And it's not. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's some there's certain things as emotion and there's certain thing something as misemotion or yeah. misapplied emotion. The, uh, the 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 wrong emotion for that particular experience, right? Right. And so when when you have this thing that keeps coming up and you clearly know it's 
not optimum. You clearly know these feelings are not what you choose as a free willed spiritual being having a human experience. You clearly know that this is not how I choose to feel, unless you do. Some people choose to feel certain ways, right? Mm -hmm. But but I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to feel this way. And yet it keeps coming up. This is this is very different, right? This is something else. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that it was a reactive emotion. Yeah. It was coming from a reactive place. Something was done to me. Something happened to me. Something something came up, whether it be a motivator, whether it be a, a, an a absolute overt act that hit me a transgression, you know, whatever. And it turned me into feeling this way, made me have this emotion. Yeah. And that's not self-determined. Yeah. Yeah, is because it? absolutely not. Because the thing is when it comes to victim tones, who whoever whoever is a victim, and I'm not I'm not victim shaming at all, but whoever has that viewpoint at that time, they were like something was lost because of something else. It was a loss of having this because of something else. Is that self-determined? Absolutely not. Because it was about somebody else. Nobody feels like a victim unless they consider the possibility of somebody else being self-determined over their lives in some mm -hmm. way, shape or form. So um, we did pick up the, the misemotion, which Jonathan's going to read here, the definition. Well, there's, there's two definitions here, and this is on page 163 of the PDF, the Dynamic Scientology Technical Dictionary. Uh, I'm going to start with misemotional because that's a little bit more direct to what you were talking about. Misemotional is mm -hmm. uh, defined as one, such a word would indicate that a person did not display the emotion called for by the actual circumstances of the situation. Two, being misemotional is synonymous with being irrational. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, mi it. yeah. Now, miss emotion. The the other definition above that, anything that is unpleasant emotion, emotion such as antagonism, anger, fear, grief, apathy, or a death feeling. Two, emotion and miss emotion include all levels of the complete tone scale except pain. Emotion and miss emotion are closely allied to quote unquote motion being only a finer particle action. Now that brings us back to the ran randomity yep. and, and emotion lecture from 1951. He says, now, if you're going to deal with statics, you have to oppose them. Now, static is a thetan, a spirit, you, the being. You have the to being, oppose, yeah. oppose them with motions or use the static as a means of affecting motion and then give at least as much time to motion as you do the static. Now, this isn't in the lecture, but LRH also says that emotion is used by a being to get a desired result. And to me, that's the crux of what we're talking about here and what you you guys were just going mm -hmm. back and forth on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, emotion is used by the being to get a desired result. And I think the reason why a lot of people feel that certain uh, some Scientologists might be heartless is because they don't get the desired result. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you don't understand exactly. me. You yeah. don't understand what I've yeah. been through. You don't understand where I'm coming from. You're not giving me the result, the desired result that I want. Yeah. And so, because so we just, go ahead. I was just going to say, most people are used to sympathy, and that's as far as it goes. But if you look right. at any situation that you've had handled with friends, etc. How useful is it to have somebody say to you, I'm so sorry that happened to you, um, you know, like, and th that's really as far as it goes. Whereas, you know, with Scientology, it's like, let's fix your problems. And, you know, there's actually a term, I think, I'm not sure where, but um, for people that don't want to fix their problems, um, but, mm -hmm. you know, especially lower at the bridge that's that's their reality is that okay you, you i'm i'm gonna make you or um i want you to come down the tone scale to sympathy and that's where it stays but the thing is there's this whole tone scale with like all other different tones that you could possibly 
be in, um, that you can bring a person up so that they, you know, raise their awareness on the situation. Mm -hmm. And when they finally, you know, get to the top, they realize, oh, you know what? I could have been self-determined on that instead of that (laughs) just happened to me. There is no way that this can uh, possibly resolve itself. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that, that goes back to, and I'm sorry to beat this again, but he says, if you're going to deal with statics, you have to oppose them with motions or use the static as a means of affecting motion. So when somebody says, well, you don't think this what happened to me, and it's so terrible. And you go, okay. So what would you like to do about that? Some people would say that's heartless. Yeah. Yeah. They would. I mean, I don't know how many times I run into it. My own mom said, oh, John. You always have a solution for everything. I don't want solutions. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? She, no, I don't oh want God. solutions. I just want you to understand what I'm saying. Mom, I understand where you're coming from. What would you like to do about it? But you don't under, you know, and it just, and, and yeah. And, and, you know, in the Bro. end, she told me, and I've said this before, in the end, uh, when she was on her deathbed, she said, you know what? I tried to go to church with your aunt and everything, and I just couldn't believe any of that crap anymore. You ruined me. Because <laughs> she, right. she couldn't go down the tone scale on it anymore. I mean, she literally right. said that. I mean, I, I, so I just want to tell like a personal experience. Um, when I first got into Scientology, total noob. Um you know, I didn't, I didn't know much about, you know, responsibility in the sense that, you know, Scientology puts it as and stuff like that. Um, and when I would go in session, obviously I didn't know what it was really about. I would get so frustrated and so ARC broken, um, because I, I, we just couldn't keep it there. You know, like, like I wanted to feel, I guess, you know, duplicated in some way. And even though I was, it it was like, okay, well, we're going to need to go to the next level. Um, in other words, I think, I think sometimes when, when you can go in session, you want your auditor to agree with you that it, that, that it was messed up. Uh, you, you want them to, you know, like, um, feel sorry for you. You, you, you want to have that validation because you can't provide it yourself. You're not whole yourself. So you want that other person to just be like, Mm -hmm. yeah, this was an injustice. But the thing is, um, you'll unfortunately soon find out contrary to, uh, being in, for example, psychotherapy that that's not the case because the auditor, uh, this was something that I learned um, a little while back was that it was actually a realization I had was that even if it's a positive evaluation, because I was looking at it as the auditor can't invalidate or evaluate for you. I was looking at it as just as a negative thing, like with evaluation, like, no, your Mm -hmm. feelings aren't, uh, your feelings aren't valid kind of thing. And that's an evaluation. But it's actually even positive ones. So even if you were hurt, the auditor shouldn't evaluate for you because then what ends up happening is they they are validating the fact that you are a victim and so you never move past that. So it's like, you know, your self-determinism, they're agreeing that your self-determinism was not uh, where it should be. Whereas, you know, in auditing, we realize, obviously, you know, being is responsible for everything, everything that happens to them. Um, and that, and that, and that's obviously important, important to know. Yeah. Well, and, and, and let me be clear when, uh, I've had friends who lost loved ones or when I've had people who are clearly in grief, like clearly going through some stuff, broken relationship, broken marriages, things have happened. Life, life be life, right? And clearly a person is going through a very, very difficult moment. Um, this is what I said to one of my clients I was talking to a while back. And she was going through some uh, a divorce and some financial issues at the same time. It was a whole bunch of things. And I was on the phone with her for two and a half hours. Two and a half hours I was on the phone with her. And she got got to a point somewhere in the conversation where she was like, you're not even listening to me. 
And I said, why, why would you say that? Why would you say that? I said, we've been on the phone for two and a half hours. What makes you think I'm not listening to you? She said, because you're not agreeing with what I'm saying. I said, well, I can listen to you and not agree. Don't you agree? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And she said, she said, well, yeah, but but you, you but you have to admit, you have to agree that this was clearly wrong. It was clearly a thing, right? And I said, well, no, I can agree to that. I can agree to that. I said, and could you agree, right, that there some part of this problem you were causative? Could you agree that some part of this you caused? Could you agree that some part of this was was that of your own making, even just being there in that yeah. situation that was so deplorable and you knew he was messed up. <laughs> yeah. You knew he was messed up. And you pray your own words. You knew he was messed up when you met him. Exactly. There's always so, some... so could you sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say there's always some knowingness, you know. Uh as John yeah. always points out, a Thetan knows. And uh when when bad things happen to us, um, you know, th there is some responsibility always at play. Uh and, and and that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. Um, because yeah. it's, it's such a you, it's such a diverse conversation. Um but when it comes to bad things happening to people, there there, there definitely is um a lot of responsibility and there's two viewpoints to make you can either feel like okay i was a victim and then you know stay stuck in that or you can feel mm -hmm. empowered and be like okay so this happened what have i learned from it how can i change things um how can i be more responsible next time you know that kind of thing um yeah and and that's definitely something that a lot of people struggle with i mean i struggle with it uh, I think I think most people, you know, uh, this is why we have Scientology is because, you know, like on grade four, it's service facsimiles. On grade two, it's over it's and withholds. You know, we get through all those barriers to where we can be clear and we can understand, okay, this is why I did the things that I did and take, you know, full ownership of that because it's much better to be like, I am in control of my reality versus other people are in control of my reality. And a lot mm -hmm. of people don't see that because, well, you know, when other people feel like um, they're a victim, it, it still makes them mm -hmm. right. And and this is the thing. So LRH basically says that um, a Thetan never fully gives up his position and that position in short summarizes to uh rightness so whether you're right in being a victim or whether you're right in being empowered uh that really defines a person and in scientology mm -hmm. we are not trying to make people right in being a victim we are trying to make them right in being empowered this is why there's a whole that's so good there. yeah um, you know, with psychotherapy, it's essentially making a person right in being a victim. Now, whether or not that works, I don't have much experience in that. But what I do know is that I have had the best time in my life when I was fully doing courses in Scientology, studying, uh, getting auditing, all of that stuff versus when in psychotherapy, having somebody else say, okay, you know, this is the pull you take to make you feel better. Um, and mm. I, I, I definitely resonate so much with a higher frequency because the thing is, it doesn't matter how low you've been in life. If you really choose to realize and understand that, okay, I can be accountable. I was accountable. Uh, I have the responsibility to make my own decisions versus something like I wasn't accountable. I couldn't be accountable and I uh, couldn't make my own decisions. You know, th that takes away from your power versus, you know, <laughs> being in power. And I, I, I know I use the word power a lot, but it's so true. Um, the best you are being is when you feel like you are in complete control of your life. Complete. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting because LRH says here in the same lecture, Randomity and Emotion, he said a person's tone 
goes down in direct ratio to his belief in his ability to handle motion. There we go. You, you could also say this. A person must be dangerous to motions. Any motion that comes in his direction will either be used or kicked straight away. That's, that is being dangerous. A person considers to be considers he has good self-confidence. Hear this. A person considers that he has good self-confidence when he feels this way. He doesn't, it doesn't matter what motions of a hostile nature come into his environment. He will immediately be able to damp them out, convert them, or get rid of them. He can handle them. So when when you are really, really on your stuff and you know what you you know that you know that you know that you know, no matter what happens to you, no matter what motion, no matter who left, no matter who came, no matter what they said, no matter what they did. A person who really considers himself to be in good self-confidence, like I really know who I am, whatever motion comes at it, he can either dampen them down, damp, damp them out, convert them, or get rid of them altogether. Absolutely. So, so they, so, 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 whatever came at me, I'm not saying that shit don't happen. Shit happens, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if if I'm in a good position in who I am, if it comes at me, I can either a Damp it down, which means it has less of an effect on me. Okay, I still feel crappy, but it has less of an effect on me. Or I can convert it. Huh? Let me see if I can turn this around for myself. Boom, and turn the you know a negative into a positive, yeah, right? It's, it's or B versus or, acceptance, basically. Yes. Or, or C or C, you can get rid of it altogether. It just as is. It is. It goes away because it cannot exist in the environment of somebody who is this theta, this yeah. powerful. Yeah. And you see. And with Scientology, uh, Scientology, I believe, teaches you ways. It doesn't. It doesn't teach you ways how to be less empathetic or feel like. Uh, well, it shouldn't. I have seen some effects in certain people where they've taken it the wrong way and have become, I guess, cold to it. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's supposed to. What it's supposed to do for you is just open your awareness so that you know. Okay. Uh, I feel more in control of my own life versus not in control at all. Mm -hmm. The only the, I'm, I'm gonna say this: the only time a person would take this knowledge of uh, of who you really are, this knowledge of how to communicate with beings and 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 as far as human beings and um, thetans, the only way a person can kind of take this and take it to a different level is if the person just genuinely doesn't care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If, if if the person just doesn't care, then they're gonna come at you, and you go feel that they don't care. Right. You go yeah. feel that it's it's like it's like oh yeah, you just don't care about what I'm saying. You don't care about me. Yeah. You don't care about this whatever whatever. And if you feel that way, then communicate with somebody else. Like I'm... like 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 the, let me tell you something. And and you're talking about somebody who again came out of Jehovah's Witness, came out of you know a, a very uh, strict religious household, whatever. There's some things that I felt that they just didn't care about when it came to me. Okay. Right. And what I had to realize is they don't have to, yeah. <laughs> right? My yeah. mama, my mama don't have to care about what is important to me. You don't have to care about that. And when I, re when I got that notion that she doesn't have to care, I stopped communicating with her about that. And I only communicated with the people who I felt cared about me. Exactly. And it was fine. We yeah. we had we had good to it. I felt so loved, and I felt so. And I, and, and let me say this. And I found that in Scientology, when I could talk very freely about my experiences, when I could talk very freely about my afflictions, when I could talk very freely about things that has happened to me, and where I felt like I was a victim, right? But I wasn't uh, permitted or allowed to stay in victimhood. You know, um, my, my spiritual teacher used to always tell me, he used to say, pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. Yeah. Yeah. You're going you gonna to stub your toe <laughs> on the side of the bed, but suffering in it and staying on the floor and wailing about it and not getting up and going to work, that's a choice. Yeah. He, he says here in the Randominated Emotion lecture on page eight, paragraph four. What life does with motion in general, it also does with pain. 
because pain is merely an intensified and more random motion. The first thing that life does about pain is to throw it back and employ it as conquered, converted effort. It gets mm. motion coming in and it throws it right out again. That which doesn't kill you, and this isn't what he's saying, this is what I'm saying. That would that which doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. If you if you at least evaluate it and go, what did we learn from all of this? <laughs> yeah. And and then that's how you yeah. you you throw it right back out because you're like, oh, okay develop a firm policy so that this doesn't happen again or you know and 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 that's the index of awareness and i think awareness in in my estimation awareness comes before responsibility because you have to be aware of responsibility yeah. in order to use it and and you see that in people where you see sign independent scientologists or scientologists either way and and in they go, wow he's really being callous with that person no, no, you're looking at it from your standpoint, your viewpoint, understanding this data and going, okay, so what do you, what do you want to do about this? How can we make this better? What's the solution to this so that you're not suffering in pain? Because pain is merely an intensified and more random motion. And he also goes on to say yes. that, uh, let's see here, where is it? Uh, trying to find it here i lost my place uh it, that he, well he says man is pretty good he can post his mind out someplace and he has learned to handle machines and things so when some motion comes along he can change the direction of this motion something comes in and touches him and he re-diverts it or redirects it at his first effort his first effort is to catch it and throw it away this is very important what i'm telling you now because you're going to be looking for just this point above other points as you're running effort processing, because it's what you do with the effort. What mm -hmm. you do, do capital D O it's not because if you refuse it, it remains randomity. It remains too much. Yeah. You can't, you can't handle it. So it just sits there and is just roiling and everything like that. And you, a Scientologist comes in and says, okay, so let's, let's, let's dissect this real quick. Okay. So, and you could say this to somebody, not that very many people could accept it early on. What could you be responsible for? That's it. <laughs> what, what could you what What could you be responsible for? What could you take responsibility of? Right. What could you be responsible for? I love it. I I like I like that pain is randomity with volume. He says here, pain is randomity with volume. Pain, vibration, randomity with volume. You can use these interchangeably, he says. That pain is, is something random shit happening to me with volume. Not it's bigger, it's louder, it's more apparent, right? And that hurts me. That doesn't feel good to me as a thing, right? As a static, right? Because I just want everything to be peace. And I just want everything to be like equilibrium and no motion. Just, just, just chill man but then <laughs> pain is randomity with volume and when you feel in pain you're really feeling something that is not aligning with you as a static you as a thetan it's not aligning with you and now we've put volume to it we it, we've made it that much louder in our vibrational field right and therefore it starts to hurt it starts to feel pain you know this is why uh, one thing I love about the assists, right, especially like the contact assist, is that when you get knocked about or you hit just your leg on something or whatever, and I say, oh, do a contact assist, do a contact assist. And the person is not a Scientologist, right? The person is not a Scientologist, but I've shown them what it is or how to do it, right, the contact assist. Every single time, they'll just crack up laughing. So they'll, they'll take this pain, right? They'll take the pain, boom, randomity with volume. Boom. Take the pain. And I say, okay, do a contact assist. And they tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. A contact assist. And every single time, they just start laughing. And it's like they totally shifted that same motion. Tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. Hit, they hit the, leg on, the shit on the wall or the door. And they'll tap it and it'll turn into a different feeling. Yeah. This happens uh, every time, no it, matter it, what it is. It's amazing because basically what you're doing is you're getting the person out of that pattern of, 
okay, now I'm supposed to. If there's pain, I'm supposed to yep. cry. If there's pain, I'm seeking sympathy. If there's pain, I need to be in a lower tone. Um, yep. You know, I, I did this with a, a, a relative where um, we were sitting on the couch and she was saying that she had, you know, a lot of pain in her legs. And I did a, a, an assist with her. And at the end of the day, she was like so amazed. She thought I like hypnotized her or something. She was like, wow, why don't I feel any pain in my legs? And I'm like, well, it's, you know, obviously because you, what makes things more solid is the belief. So obviously I'm not saying that there is no pain, but what I am saying is that you can, make it a lot better or worse for yourself depending on what you believe and that mm -hmm. goes in line with you know what you were saying um you know about 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 you know getting out of that cycle and 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 um trying to i guess broaden people's awareness in that sense yeah this is so good listen i i hope you guys i hope you guys know that a true Scientologists, hear me, a true Scientologist understands, <laughs> okay? Yeah. ARC is understanding. A true Scientologist understands. And so when you say to a Scientologist, oh, you don't understand me, a true Scientologist understands. The difference is this, we understand all of you. We understand the fullness of who you are. We understand the totality of you. And so if you feel like I don't understand this incident, know that I understand what you're going through. And I understand that there's even more to you than that. Yeah. I, I think and a lot I'm going to, and, and, and I'm going to speak to the more. Yeah. And I think that might, you know, especially for somebody who's low on the bridge, low on the tone scale and stuff, that might be a little bit daunting because, you know, they have never really known anything else. And so when somebody mm -hmm. comes along and be like, and, and like, like, I can fix your problems or I can help you fix them or, um, you know, anything other than what they've re like experienced throughout their whole life, like sympathy, et cetera. It, it's like, well, that person is more right because, uh, you know, they know more. And a lot of people have, have a button on people who essentially, uh, you know, know more in terms of like being able to read people, that kind of thing. Like I, I have a relative who mm -hmm. I was like, hey, you know, let's do Scientology. It's really helped my life. Maybe it can help you. And they are obviously, um, in terms of the OCA, they are Matterhorns. And so they don't want to do that because they fear that Scientology makes them wrong. Whereas in essence, mm. it only makes them more right. A lot of people feel right. that effect when they have to talk to somebody and they have to, you know, say, well, um, this happened to me and all of that stuff and, and, and have somebody else help them, especially with Matterhorns. Uh, just, just for clarification, Matterhorns are those people who, um, on the OCA, which is a personality test, they score um, higher than uh, their D column, which is certainty, is higher than everybody else, uh, uh, higher than the other mm -hmm. um, columns. So when that happens is they have this rightness with them and anything that threatens that, including their victimhood, they're like, no, 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 they, they, they don't want to deal with it right. at all. And... Um, when it comes to the auditor, you've got to be willing to talk to the auditor and interested in your own case. And if 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 it extends as far as your rightness, that's going to be incredibly challenging. So, you know, for anybody who is interested in doing auditing and stuff like that, don't see it that way. We are not making you yeah. other determined. Uh, we are instead empowering you. It, it doesn't matter what the auditor thinks. Uh, you know, who cares? It's just, <laughs> it's just a case of you getting in session, you dealing with these things. The auditor really doesn't give a crap. Um, it's more about restoring your self-determinism and also the right self-determinism. Uh, what I mean by that is a lot of people, like I said, will be 
will, will think they're right and their D column will be certain, but then their mm -hmm. G column, which is responsibility, will be low. So they will be, mm -hmm. uh, they will be certain that their irresponsibility is right, you see, and that obviously right. isn't a good thing because we want to restore the being to where they are as responsible and, you know, as capable as they are, which is, you know, if, if you're looking at the essence of a being, their beingness is basically good. So if they're irresponsible, it's not so much in alignment with, with a basically good being. A basically good being mm -hmm. is responsible, is uh, correctly estimated, is, um, you know, certain and all of those things. Stable. So we want to yeah. raise all of those bars in terms of uh, the personality test. And I know that the personality test can sometimes be uh, a little bit arbitrary, but at the end of the day, it is telling a person something about themselves and it's telling the auditor something about you. But that said, it is not a judgment. Uh, it yeah. is more a uh, sort of like a starting point to where we can see what you need help with. Yeah. It's a, pers a personal inventory, a self-assessment. And listen, this is this is really good. And I would love to continue this if there's a part two or something like that. But I, I feel that we have so much, we've unpacked so much about, are Scientologists really heartless? Somebody who really knows their stuff and is applying the tech and doing what they should be doing, especially us as independent Scientologists who are not bound by certain, uh, cultural if you will viewpoints or whatever like I, I think that this is something that we could definitely lean more into so listen we love you very very much um i know i do and there ain't nothing you can do about it believe me people have tried <laughs> <laughs> well folks uh we hope you enjoyed this as quentin said and for lisa and myself we bid you adieu and we'll catch you in the next podcast. Maybe we'll do a part two on this next week. We've got things lined up for the rest of the week in podcast, but uh, we'll mull it over and have some conversations about it. So for Lisa and myself. Bye. <laughs> namaste. And we love you. Peace.